two chapters today, and that would be Padfoot Returns and The Madness of Mr. Crouch. Whom, oddly enough, Padfoot spends most of his chapter talking about. And we get one of the most hypocritical statements in this entire series, in which Sirius Black tells us to, when looking at the worth of a man, to pay attention to how he treats not his equals, but his inferiors. You asshole. Seriously, is Crutcher not worth it? You're willing to, like, tisk-tisk at Mr. Crouch for his treatment of Winky, and you just... Mmm! Mmm! And, um... So becomes the obvious reason why Sirius needs to grow up. But that's one of the things. How much of what we're looking at here is a man who's never had the opportunity to grow up? Obviously, James changed at some point if Lily did eventually fall in love with him. But I don't think Sirius ever really did. And while maybe in his later 20 years and into his 30s, he might have had that opportunity, it was certainly taken from him for the, from those 12 years in Azkaban. How much are you actually going to grow up when all you're doing is reliving your most painful moments? And the thing is, that might make him mature in certain ways, but how much is he gonna just fall back on his own way, old ways when he gets out and finds that a lot of his biases are in fact even more apparent to him now. The evils of Slytherin, his own dislike for his own family, his dislike of Snape. All of these might seem to him now to be justified, even if they're more general and causing more problems than they are, you know, offering solutions. The thing is, is Sirius isn't going to mature. We don't get a whole lot of time to be an adult now, Sirius, and deal with our problems simply because he's been cooped up. He's gone from being in Azkaban to being on the run, and he'll go to being cooped up in uh, Grimwald Place. With his bad memories, again, I'm not expecting him to mature there. It's not a good environment for him. And, again, that's one of the things. If, if you're in a bad environment, how twisted are you going to get to survive? Sirius, you've made a statement here, but you're not holding to it yourself. And maybe you really should. But I guess the saying always is, do as I say, not as I do, huh? But Sirius isn't the only adult in this uh, that we need to look at. In fact, he's certainly not the focus of these two chapters. Uh, the title of e the first one says focus on Sirius, and the second one says focus on Mr. Crouch. But like I said, Sirius spends most of his conversation with uh, the Golden Trio actually talking about Mr. Crouch. This is where we get the, the history that Sirius hasn't actually had a trial, and it was Mr. Crouch's doing. We also then get the history that tells us that Mr. Crouch threw his own son into Azkaban. And it is from here that I have noticed a very interesting parallel, historically, uh, to a few gentlemen by the name of Brutus. Uh, now, I'm speaking of two Brutuses, uh, and I'm going to keep calling them Brutuses because I'm not even going to stand a chance of uh, speaking their full names. And historically, they're better known by Brutus than by any other name. Uh, the most well-known Brutus, of course, would be the Brutus that helped assassinate Julius Caesar. And in some continuing mythologies, such as Dante's Inferno, is now forever just chewed by Satan. 
um, at the center of hell for his betrayal, along with Cassius, who also betrayed Julius Caesar, and um, Judas. But again, that's one continuing mythology. A lot of other people, of course, see him as a man defending his republic from a tyranny. Historically, where his name comes from, also true. Uh, the second Brutus, less well known, but actually um, occurring historically before uh, the Caesar Brutus, is a Brutus who did end a tyranny. <laughs> In fact, a Brutus that helped start Rome as a republic rather than an empire, which then ended with the second Brutus. Yeah, no, the, the Roman Republic is, is bookend by Brutuses. This Brutus actually historically uh, helped to end the reign of terror of Tarquin the Proud. Um, and this one is all wrapped up in the story of the rape of Lucrece. Um, she was a very virtuous person, Tarquin's son said his wife was virtuous. They all decide, hey, let's sneak up to the women um, where they're having a party and we'll see who's actually most virtuous. And they sneak up and like Tarquin's son's wife is like they're drinking and gossiping and not doing their proper work and then Lucrece is over here doing her proper work and, and not being non-virtuous um, in, in the Roman example. So obviously <laughs> Tarquin's son decides I gotta do it. So he actually goes to Lucrece and says you're going to have sex with me. And she says, no, I'm not. And he says, you are, or I'm going to kill you, kill that slave, and throw you in bed together and say, I came in to find you in bed together and then killed you. And she's like, shit. So he rapes her, and then goes off, I'll tra la 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 um, Like, that's just handled everything. And she tells her husband and her father and Brutus, who might be her brother. He's at least in there as like the top three people she tells um, before killing herself. Yeah, she basically says, guess what? You're ruled by a tyrant whose family thinks they can do everything. Including rape me. I didn't go for it, I was threatened into it. So then Brutus kills Tarquin the Proud and his family and sets it the Roman Republic. Why am I talking about Brutus? This first historical Brutus sets up the Roman Republic. Uh, and very shortly after, his own sons um, proud and power-hungry as they are, decide that they want to take over. And they attempt a coup. It doesn't go well because it's a bunch of like aristocratic teenagers who talk a lot better than they fight. They get caught, they get trialed, tried, and they get condemned to die. And Brutus weeps and Brutus kills them. Historically, at least certainly in the literature we have of Rome, Rome is the highest good. Rome is the focus. Everything is sacrificed to protect Rome. That includes the self, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That includes the family. That includes your enemies, especially if they have to die in flames. And if your family is Rome's enemy, then they die in flames. Can you see what I'm pointing to here? 
Crouch is, at least unconsciously, attempting to make himself a Brutus in this moment. It's this idea that the Ministry of Magic must go ahead of all. And it must sustain and continue. And if anything threatens that, they must be removed, removed, removed with impunity. And that includes Crouch's son. But the thing is, what you really have to note here is that Brutus wept. Crouch doesn't. Everyone perceives him as a very cold person. Someone who is just trying too hard and because of that isn't quite human anymore. And that's the thing. When Rome comes first, can you have a fully formed human identity within that? If everything must be subservient to it. With the Ministry of Magic, can you exist as a whole person with flaws and strengths and questions and goals and wants and needs and friends and family if the only thing that must survive is is the Ministry of Magic. Can you have morals in that? It is Mr. Crouch that makes the decision not to hold a trial and, and everyone goes with that. And, and I'm sure they'll tell you, of course, that, oh, well, it, it, was, it was a hectic time. A hectic time in which they were fighting for the ministry to survive. And individuals were falling through the cracks there. But it really seems that in Crouch representing a type of cold historical Brutus in this moment, he then creates our second Brutus, very differently from the first. Our Caesar Brutus is just like his Tarquin predecessor. He wants to keep Rome at its best and not to have it fall to one man. But is that because the first Brutus didn't try and be emotional in his actions. And he didn't try to be emotionless. He simply did what had to be done. And he wept while doing it. If we suddenly have a heartless Tarquin Brutus, does that mean we get the opposite of what our Caesar Brutus should be? Is Barty Jr. here Suddenly not the Brutus that wants to keep a tyrant from power, but in fact one who wants to place him into power. If the Republic betrays you, are you not tempted to... start a tyranny? If the Republic that asked everything of your family, including rejection of you. Can you not then reject it? And in fact, historically, the Caesar Brutus did something similar. Julius Caesar, even though Brutus fought on the opposite side in the Civil War, forgave him protected his life and treated him as a son. But Brutus saw different morals, so he rejected... rejected even family. 
So we actually have a very interesting parallel, except with Barty Sr. and Jr. it's twisted. The morals seem to be lacking, and, and it's a moment of all ends, all means justify the ends we seek. Historically, the two Brutuses were seeking the same end. But with this twisted version, we're now seeking almost the opposite. Or very similar ideas. Is Barty Crouch Sr. in his decision to ignore the moral implications of what the Republic should be, trying to place the Ministry of Magic as a tyranny? Just as Barty Jr. is trying to place Voldemort as one. When they say that you're very similar to somebody else, you could either be flattered or you could be very, very angry about it. Harry and Voldemort are very similar, but it's a question of what you do with your powers and your ability. It's your choices, as Dumbledore would point out. The two Bardies are making different choices, but they certainly seem to be making the same type of choices. And those are, are morally lacking. So the question then becomes, is Barney Jr. our Caesar Brutus, attempting to kill off the tyranny of the Ministry of Magic as he sees it, or will Harry have to step in and become that Brutus? But I suppose that depends. Do you see Brutus as a complete and utter traitor or a very honorable man? Okay, before I go, we will note that, uh, hey, killing, killing Julius Caesar did not in fact prevent an empire, but may have sped it along. The Roman Republic fell. And Augustus Caesar, after yet another civil war, took charge as emperor. Hmm. They say hindsight is twenty twenty. Our birdies aren't going to quite realize that yet. Not until they're, they're well past the point of being saved. Okay, so I will see you next time. I'm going to keep reading, and I hope you do too. See ya.